test, this nostrils test. It's taking a while today. Oh. That should count for something. I'm trying to drink my juice and I'm about done. Just left my daughter's appointment. Blood again. Oh, okay, I can't see the bruise right now, but yeah. So I had to get blood drawn in my arm. It already has a bruise. Yeah. Okay. Alright, y'all, so here's the update. Baby is fine. Yeah, so, thing is, protein levels are super, super high, so, I have to stay and be induced. So, right now, we're waiting here if I can um, go home real quick and um, get some things packed up. Because, y'all, I haven't even packed my hospital bag yet. And that was going to be my next video I was going to work on. <laughs> Gosh, so word of advice, all moms, new moms, because um, <laughs> obviously I'm not a brand new mom. This is my second child I'm giving birth to, and I, I wasn't ready. So be ready. So I say pack that bag early because <laughs> you, you never know what comes up, and you don't want to. You know, <laughs> be unprepared. So yeah, so that's what we're waiting on, and then I'll be induced, and baby will be here. Oh my gosh! Yeah. about this birth story in the last video it was my nine month um update pregnancy update and um well <laughs> nine months didn't last long at all i don't know it lasted like a few days and yeah so here's what happened um i last told you all that um my blood pressure was high and i had to go to um the hospital labor and delivery um, twice a week to um, to be monitored um, to go through the non-stress test um, each time um, so the first time I went I had to get um, the steroids shot I had to get the steroid shot um, to help the baby's um, lungs um, develop, finished developing a little bit faster just in case I had to deliver early. Um, 
not the most fun thing in the world, but it wasn't bad. Um, so yeah. So I was going to the hospital for that and then um basically my next doctor's appointment the next week. Um my uh my blood pressure was high, but then they checked it again and then it, she checked it with a different um band and so then it was lower that time. Um but then when I got to the hospital for my monitoring, um I didn't pass the non stress test. They was waiting on baby to like move around and he wouldn't. He was very stubborn. And so then I had to go and get more ultrasounds done at the hospital and um uh urine sample, I had to do a urine sample. So the ultrasound went fine, everything that they was looking for um was fine. So baby was one hundred percent perfect and but I was just sitting there waiting for a long time. And <laughs> Come to find out, after all that waiting, they came back, well, the nurse came back and said that my protein levels that they tested in my urine was um, three times higher than what it was before, what it was last time. So, like, the last time it was, like, 200, and it shouldn't be over 300. Mine was at 600. So with that and the high blood pressure, my doctor ordered that I go ahead and be induced. So I couldn't leave the hospital. And it wouldn't be so bad if I was actually prepared. Y'all, it's my second pregnancy, second birth, and I wasn't prepared. So they told me I couldn't leave. They're going to set me up a room and go ahead and start inducing. And... I didn't have a hospital bag packed, and I was like, stupid. So, yeah, so we was waiting around trying to see if they would at least, like, let me leave to go pack a bag and go eat and then come back, but no. So, um, they, uh, sent me to the room that they had set up for me and started getting me hooked up to the monitors and stuff and started handing me all this paperwork and having to sign, um, paperwork and then I'm trying to, uh, <laughs> set my husband off to go pick up, you know, my bags, like go pack up my bags for me, so... We're like scrambling around like for a piece of paper. I'm like, here, write it down. Now the good thing was I had everything that I needed to pack um, listed in my phone. So all I had to do was just pull out my phone and pull up the list because I have that shopping list um, app on my phone. So I have things on there like, you know, my shopping, my grocery list, and a whole bunch of other stuff on there too. So that app is not just for, not good just for shopping lists. It's good for listing other stuff too. So I was able to like write down everything that I needed so he can just go back um, to the house and go pick everything up and bring it back and bring me something to eat. So then they um they um put in the the cervix softener. Um, what is it called? I never remember the names of that stuff. Because when I had Edgy, I couldn't remember the name of what they gave me. Um, I still don't remember. This time I had something different. I, th I think it's called... I don't know, y'all. Cervic? Cervidil? I don't know. But, yeah. So, they, they put that in. And so, I had to wait. I forgot how long I had to wait. I think I had to wait like two hours. Two or three hours before I could eat something. And y'all, I didn't eat breakfast that morning. Because, um, 
so here's the thing. So before my doctor's appointment, I wouldn't eat because I wanted my weight to show <laughs> show me at my lightest. So I would always eat after my doctor's appointment. So I didn't eat breakfast and then I go through my doctor's appointment and then I go to, to the hospital for monitoring. And then I can't leave the hospital, and then they go and induce me, and I, I still can't eat. So I was like, I was miserable, because it was like a repeat of AJ. Even though I did eat before um, we went to the hospital to get induced, um, I, w I wish I would have ate a little bit closer um, to being induced. I went a very long time without eating. But I didn't have to go that long this time without eating. So they did tell me that after they put in the Cervidil that um, after a few hours I could eat. But I had to eat light, which was still fine with me because well, I just wanted to eat. <laughs> I didn't want to go through labor again and be starving because that's how my labor was so bad with AJ. Like, labor itself wasn't bad. It was just, I was exhausted and hungry. Like, I had no energy, no strength. And I was like, oh, I was ready to quit. I was begging the nurses, like, hey, can't y'all just, like, get the doctor to just, like, do a C-section? Golly, I'm ready for this to be over. I'm, I, I'm weak. But they ain't paying me no attention. Which, I guess, is a good thing. <laughs> So, this time, I was able to eat. So, when I did eat, I was so happy. So happy. Um, so, it was like, I think like 6. Like 6 o'clock in the evening when I was able to eat. I was so happy. Because it was like by 3 o'clock by the time they um put the um the server deal in. So, 6 o'clock I was able to eat. And, um, because my goal was to eat before they put the server deal in. But, um, my husband didn't make it back in enough time, and they was, they was ready to get things going. And I was like, y'all can't wait for me to just eat something first. No. Had I been thinking, I, I would have, like, had my husband just go downstairs and pick something up from the hospital real quick. The, um, the hospital cafeteria and just bring it up to me for me to munch on before they got started with thing with everything. Oh, boy. But, yeah, another thing to learn for next time. <laughs> and there will be a next time. It will be the last time. Um, I got to make sure I stay on it next time. No, like, for real. Because I was supposed to be on it this time, and I still dropped the ball. So, um... So six o'clock, I was able to um, to eat something, and then basically it was just spending the next few hours, and then monitoring um, me and the baby, and giving the cervical time to soften my cervix and prep me for actual induction. So, um, so that night, basically, because I think they were supposed to take it out at like um, like like three in the morning, because I think it was supposed to stay in for twelve hours. And so that night, you know, they're like, okay, well, you lay down and get you some rest. And, of course, you lay down and doze off to sleep. And then, like, five minutes later, they bust through the door and then start wanting to move you around and stick you with stuff and, and tell you to turn on your other side and, oh, turn this way. And <sighs> There was no rest. And then they go, okay, well, you get you some rest. Like, really? <laughs> I was trying to. So, yeah. Um... So they they uh, came and took the um the server deal out. Um, I think it was like one o'clock in the morning. I can't remember the time. Just, basically, it was like you know in the middle of the night, in the early in the morning, they um took the server deal out, and um, eventually I had to get up to go to the restroom. And when I went to the restroom, it felt like, <laughs> it felt like something like fell out down there. And I was like, what in the world is that? Because it wasn't big enough to, to feel like a baby. So I was like, what is that? So I get, 
to the restroom and my mucus plug had came out so I had the bloody show so that was a really good sign so I, I got excited like I was tired and all so it probably didn't even look like I was excited on my face I was just probably like oh yeah like that's probably how it looked on my face but on the inside I really was like we almost there we're almost there <laughs> Yeah. I think it was like around five. Like four or five when I had the bloody show. And then like six o'clock they um they put the Pitocin in or was it around five when they put the Pitocin in? I'm not sure 'cause I'm I didn't even realize when they put the Pitocin in. All I know is that like after six o'clock I started feeling contractions, like strong contractions. Like, it felt like, you know, when I was having my period, like, those cramps. And it was starting to feel like that. And I was like, whoa, am I going into labor, like, on my own? And so I asked the nurse, and I was like, did they did y'all put the Pitocin in already? Oh, yeah, we did that already. I was like, oh, no wonder. That's why I feel like this then. So the Pitocin was put in. It was like 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, when they put the Pitocin in. Basically suffered through oh, labor pains, which contractions, they did not feel like the contractions I had with AJ. I think AJ, with AJ, I was just more so, I was just tired and I was just hungry and I was frustrated and I was exhausted. This time, you know, I was good. It was just, I, I, so I, I, I had no choice but to pay more attention to the contractions and oh my gosh some things i mean i was i was getting through them but after a while i was like okay i'm getting tired of this so it wasn't that you know <laughs> ow 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 it hurts too much it was just i got tired of it <laughs> you know it got aggravating like oh my god then it was coming it was they were they started coming like so frequently and it was like i didn't have time to like brace myself for the next one or have time to like recover from the last one and get ready for the next one it was just i was like okay i need i need a break i need a break so that's when i started asking for um <laughs> for medicine i was like hey can i can y'all go ahead and do the epidural please and so then i was told that i had to wait because the um, anesthesiologist was with another patient and so I was like, okay, okay. But then I got tired of waiting. And I was like, don't y'all have, like, some medicine you can put in the IV until the epidural gets here? And so they did that. Um, So they put the medicine in. And the medicine really didn't do much. It, it, you know, it just took the edge off of it. But, yeah. So, um, so the anesthesi anesthesiologist finally came in. And, um, they, uh, was getting me ready to put the um epidural in and so my husband had to leave so they was telling him like you know go get some fresh air and all of that and um we'll have her call you um when we're ready for you to come back up <sighs> so i'm in the middle of contractions this is the thing that i don't like about having the epidural put in is that you're in the middle of contraction. Like, if you do it, like, before your contractions start or whatever, I guess. I don't know. I've never done that. Because um, I'm always trying to tough my way through stuff. Because, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Which I could have this time, too. Just like with AJ. Just, I got tired of it. I got tired of, of the contractions, y'all. So... So I got an epidural. So when they put the epidural in, you have to be like really still. And that's hard to do when you're in the middle of having contractions that are like painful. And, and like there's like no time in between them. <laughs> like you have maybe like a few, like maybe two minutes in between the contractions. And they're like, don't move. Be still. And I'm like, okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
okay, I'm gonna be still all right. So, so they put the epidural in, and as soon as she finished, I don't know what happened. I still don't know what happened. Something happened, and I felt like I was. I felt like I was about to like pass out. Like I just, I just felt. And apparently my nurse saw something <laughs> on the monitors because then she started going through drawers and stuff and she pulled out pulled out the um oxygen mask and she put it on me. She was like, Okay, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna need you to lay lie down on your side. And I'm like, Okay, what's and I'm just like, What's going on? And she's like leaning me over to lay down on my side and she's putting the mask on my face and she's like, I need you to call your husband and tell him to come back up and I wasn't like in a hurry to call him because I didn't realize I didn't realize that anything was really about to happen at the moment because I'm like why y'all even I'm like he he right out there in the hallway he ain't gonna he ain't go that far he's just right out in the hallway when he see dance these y'all just come out he gonna come on back in but he didn't <laughs> so I was like oh my goodness and I was just I was just feeling really really weird and I was like, okay, he's not coming back in the door. They got this oxygen mask on me, and I'm feeling really, really odd. I don't know what's going on. Let me call him. <laughs> so I'm laying there, and I get my phone, and I call him. And I'm just like, hey. And, he, and he's like, hey. And I was like, I need you to come back. And he was like, all right, I'm coming back upstairs. Because he was like downstairs or something. And I was like, okay. And I just hung up. Oh. Yeah. And so then they turned me over on my back. And um they're like like getting ready for like to check me to see if I'm re like ready to push. And so he comes in the door. They have my legs like propped up. And as soon as she props my legs up, the nurse goes, oh, I can see the head. And I was like, oh, my Lord, that's what that feeling is. <laughs> and now, mind y'all, the epidural has not even kicked in all the way. Like, like I'm feeling all tingly and stuff and just feeling weird. But I still, like, still feel everything. And that was one of the things that I felt, like, everything, like, it just felt real heavy down there like a lot of pressure and that's what it was the baby was like right there and so then she calls my husband and she's like look see and he looks and he was like whoa yeah and so then you know they're getting everything prepped and ready so the nurse is like okay so we're gonna do a practice push so i need you to give me um give me one practice push for me and so I do something that's like an attempt to push like I wasn't my mind wasn't ready I wasn't I didn't understand really like I really didn't understand the urgency of what was going on at the time because I'm just like hold on like too much is going on right now and y'all want me to do a practice push so I pushed but it was like it wasn't a real push it wasn't coordinated or anything like it wasn't an organized <laughs> if that makes sense it wasn't an organized push like you know you just you know you push but I wouldn't even like that. it was just like <sighs> whatever and so then I felt I felt the baby move and he kept moving and he kept moving and I wasn't pushing anymore he kept moving and then the nurse went no oh no 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 and then she she started screaming for the um she started screaming for the doctor and everybody in the room was like oh the doctor's coming it's okay honey the doctor's coming and she's like no get the doctor in here now and by the time the doctor came in his head was like already out his hair was already out. <laughs> so then um, the doctor sits down and um, she was just like, give me another push. And I do another little simple push. And then there he was. <laughs> he was out. He was out. And just the crying. And I was like, oh, crying and peeing. He, he came out just 
peeing like crazy. I couldn't believe that it went, it, had, it all happened that fast. And I still could feel everything. <laughs> Apple Joe hadn't even kicked in yet. I did my little uncoordinated push, and he pretty much came out on his own. He 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 did it all himself. Like okay, I'm getting out of here. AJ wanted to stay. I kept pushing with AJ. AJ would come out a little bit and then go back in. That boy. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's my birth story. <sighs> uh, Amari. Who I'm going to introduce to y'all right now. So, without further ado, I would like to introduce you all to Amari Azariah McCutcheon. Born November 29th, 2017. <laughs> I was about to say 19. No, 2017. Five pounds, six ounces. Y'all did perfect. You did fantastic. Ready, up. Oh my God, he looks like his brother. Does he? <laughs> Did you just get your epidural?
High five, EJ. High five.